ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q3 fy24 himachal futuristic communications limited conference call hosted by icici securities as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr mohit please over to you sir yeah hi good afternoon and thank you everyone for joining us uh, uh, for this call uh, in this call we have mr nahata promoter and managing director of the company mr vr jain cfo mr manoj bhai company secretary and mr amit agarwal head investor relations so without further delay i would now hand over the call to mr nahata for the opening remark and then we will open the floor for q and a thanks and over to you sir technical glitch at the end of the conference agency which has caused this delay i'm uh, truly sorry for that uh, good afternoon once again ladies and gentlemen and welcome to hfcs running call for the third quarter and nine months ended december 31st 2023 of financial year 24 i truly appreciate and express my gratitude to all of you for making it to today's running call of the company i'm sure that you got a chance to go through our financial results press release and investor presentation which are available on the website of the company and also on the website of stock exchanges to begin with i would like to express immense satisfaction in witnessing the resilience of indian economy the india growth story remains intact despite a subdued global growth outlook global economy is set for weakest half decade performance in last three decades said the world bank in a recent report and warned that global growth in 2024 is set to slow for a third year in a row amidst this indian growth story is promising and world world bank sees india retaining the fastest growing major economy title it forecasts a growth rate of 6.4% in fy25 accelerating to 6.5% in fy26 <coughs> india has witnessed an extraordinary decade making significant progress on innovation led by technological advancement india's telecom market is now the second largest in the world our telecom industry is currently valued at us dollar 48.61 billion and is expected to reach to us dollar 76.16 billion by 2029 growing at a cagr of 9.4% during the forecast period of 2024 to 2029 india's digital public infrastructure is testimony to its technological progress and we are well poised to become a global leader in information and communication technology and becoming a global digital powerhouse the ongoing digital revolution and investments in building a robust 5g network makes us optimistic about significant upswing in the demand for fiberization both in india and globally this heightened demand is further fueled by increased government focus on fiberization including bharat net project the expansion of fiber to home networks the proliferation of data centers widespread adoption of cloud computing the rise of internet of things investment in 5g capex and the continuous improvement of telecom infrastructure in key global markets that is india united states united kingdom france germany middle east and other nations from being an importer of telecom technology india has taken a significant step and leap in developing technologies indigenously kpmg estimates the three technologies 5g 6g satellite communication and semiconductors collectively will add us dollar 240 billion to the indian economy in next 5 years and add 1.6% to india's gdp by financial year 28 government initiatives like bharat net implementation of fiber to home pli scheme and growing demand of for high speed 5g connectivity will further foster indigenous manufacturing as a result of which 
India is fast becoming an attractive global investment and manufacturing destination. As our company aggressively moves towards a product-centric approach, we embark on a transformative, transformative journey aimed at amplifying our global footprint and solidifying our position as an industry leader. With a strategic shift away from project-centric endeavors, we are proud to unveil an array of innovative telecom products tailored to meet the diverse needs of both domestic and international markets. This strategic evolution underscores our unwavering commitment to product excellence and customer satisfaction, indicating a new era of sustainable growth and expansion. By harnessing cutting-edge technology and leveraging our deep-rooted industry expertise, we are poised to captivate global audiences with solutions that transcend geographical boundaries and redefine the benchmarks of excellence. Embracing an export-focused strategy, we are trying to unlock untapped opportunities for the strategic partnerships and establish a formidable presence in key markets worldwide. Fueled by sharp focus on innovation, HFCL unveiled a comprehensive suite of next-gen tech connectivity and 5G backhauling products like fixed wireless access equipment, MPLS routers, point-to-point -point unlicensed band radios, and unified cloud network management systems during the India Mobile Congress 2023 for both India and international markets. We also launched 1,728 high-fiber intermittently bonded ribbon cable, promising high-speed data transmission, expansion of FTTH connectivity, and addressing the demand of hyperscale data centers in India Mobile Congress. As per Andrew Binswanger, 45 new data centers covering 13 million square feet are expected to come up in India by the end of 2025. HFCL is well positioned to capture the growing impetus from data centers with the launch of its 728 high-fiber IBR cable. Besides launching our telecom and communication products in Q3, HFCL is first to transform its impact in the defense sector as well. HFCL, through its 90% owned subsidiary, Radio Private Limited, R&D enterprise specializing in cutting edge radars and RF solutions, has designed a range of surveillance radars catered to meet diverse operational needs. These radars employ frequency modulated continuous wave technology offering numerous advantages over other radar technologies, which includes high accuracy, low power consumption, light weight, and resistance to interference. HFC is also actively engaged in the development of state-of-the-art drone detection radar, poised to be an important component of modern drone detection system. HFC's ongoing cutting-edge research and development initiatives extend to diverse range of radar technologies. This includes Doppler weather radars, threat emulators, LTE-based passive radars, fog and foliage penetration radars, coastal surveillance radars, avalanche detection radars, altimeters, and more. HSL received an advanced purchase order aggregating to rupees 1127 crores to, to transform the optical transfer network infrastructure across BSNL's pan-India network. Within the dynamic landscape of India's technological evaluation, HFCL stands unequivocally at the forefront of innovation and progress. The order aimed at revolutionizing BSNL's optical transport network is a testament of our unwavering commitment advancing the nation's technology in progress. Our comprehensive network upgrade will not only address the heightened demand of enterprise and FTTH and broadband services, but strategically positions BSNL for the seamless launch of 4G services and the anticipation of 5G services. Another very significant achievement is the receipt of Rs. 623 crore order during the current quarter from a leading telecom service provider for 5G telecom networking equipment. This is the first such large order for 5G networking equipment placed on any Indian company by any telecom service provider. This strategic win is a testament to HFCL vision of designing and manufacturing 
high technology telecom equipment in india the newly secured purchase order underscores hsl's commitment to providing cutting edge solutions tailored to the unique needs of telecom landscapes moreover with enormous export market potential these indigenously developed products are in line with the country's make in india for a global stage vision hsl with its strategy is rightly positioned to not only bolster revenue but also enhance profitability profitability leading to increased returns for the shareholders in recognition of our superior quality products hsl has secured product orders exceeding rupees 1700 crores from its customers in the last few months with these new orders the current order book of the company as on 31st december 2023 stands at rupees 7678 crores moreover stl limited a subsidiary of the company has secured an order from a defense psu for supply of fiber optic expanded beam plug cable assembly this assembly is utilized for the 3d central acquisition radar a medium range high resolution surveillance radar designed to detect and simultaneously track multiple targets in hostile environments stl has already established itself as a go to wiring harness supplier for leading oem which is the largest supplier of logistical vehicles to the indian army stl's wire harness is all set to deployed in the popular high mobility and specialized truck vehicles of the oem that cater to the diverse needs of personnel and logistics across the armed forces stl also secured an order from one of india's leading vehicle manufacturers for wire harnesses the order encompasses 1282 bs6 diesel buses intended for significant transport needs our hyderabad optical fiber plant clinched the silver certificate of merit for manufacturing excellence in frost and solvents indian manufacturing awards of 2023 alongside a certificate of appreciation for good practices in digital systems at its second fikki industry 4.0 award ceremony the automotive team at htl won the gold award at quality circle forum of india in the ninth convention of quality concepts held recently Our recent order wins are clearly a testament that our strategy of moving from projects to margin equity products, launching new products, reaching out to new customers and new geographies is paying off well, and will boost our position even further in 2024. The expansion of optical fiber manufacturing facility capacity is progressing well and shall be operational as planned in addition the company is also in process of expanding its optical fiber cable production capacity from 25 million km to 35 million fiber km this expansion may also lead to significant increase in revenue and profitability the capacity will be added in a phased manner with the completion of targeted by 24 fy 2425 let me now brief you on the key performance metrics of quarter 3 of financial year 24 revenue of q3 fy 24 stood at rupees 1032.31 crores as compared to 1111.49 crores in quarter 2 of fy 24 <clears throat> and 1085 crores in quarter 3 of fy 23 ebitda for the quarter stood at 163.45 crores as compared to 149.77 crores in quarter 2 of fy24 and rupees 193.33 crores in quarter 3 of fy23 ebitda margin stands at 15.83% for quarter 3 of fy24 as compared to 13.47% for quarter 2 of fy24 and is stood at 17.8% in quarter 3 of fy23 profit after tax for quarter 3 of financial year 24 stands at 82.43 crores as compared to 70.17 crores in quarter 2 <coughs> and rupees 101.62 crores in quarter 3 of fy 23 that margin stands at 7.99% in quarter 3 as compared to 6.31% in quarter 2 
and 9.36 percent in quarter three or FY23. Segment revenue for telecom providers during the quarter quarter ended stood at 363.83 crores. Uh, that is 35.24 percent of quarter three of FY24 revenue, as compared to rupees 473 crores in quarter two of FY24, which are 42.63 percent of the revenue. During this quarter, our product revenue declined quarter on quarter basis and year on year basis due to the continued softening of demand of optical fiber cable. This temporary decline is in line with the worldwide trend seen in the last quarter and it can be attributed to inventory buildup with major operators resulting in overall reduction in revenue in absolute terms as well as lower sales realization per kilometer of fiber. Revenue of all major manufacturers of optical fiber cable has declined worldwide. We are optimistic that demand will be restored from next quarter onwards in both India and key global markets. Furthermore, we are confident that our continued efforts in designing and developing innovative and robust optical fiber cables for international markets, along with the introduction of new 5G telecom networking equipment, will further yield results in coming quarters. These efforts are expected to provide impetus to both revenue growth and profitability, along with potential to increase our margins. To conclude, 2024 is poised to be a transformative year for HFCL. We can confidently affirm that our strategic focus on new products, global expansion, focus on building both capacities and capabilities, backward and horizontal integration, has begun to yield positive results. Our commitment to strengthening market share and technology leadership positions remains steadfast as we continue to invest in innovation for both cost and performance benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for your keen participation. With this, I conclude my opening remarks and open the floor for question and answer session. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Bala Subramanya from Aryanth Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. My first first question regarding uh, 5G CAPEX side, uh, one of the Indian telco talked about uh, 5G CAPEX is picked out in this year and the global level also 5G CAPEX are coming down uh, like what's your, what's your view and overall demand environment on 5G. This is my first question. So let me answer the first question. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, Mr. Balasivinam. You know, 5G you know, when you say uh, CapEx has peaked out, it has to be seen with respect to the applications. 5G networks will again start growing. It's the initial stage the 5G networks have been put on. Now the 5G networks will grow as the new applications come in. But we find that, you know, one of the new applications which has come is a fixed wireless access instead of mobility. So which has started increasing in the CapEx in that area. So as the applications for 5G grow related to IoT and other areas, medical, education, uh, industry 4.0, you'll find that 5G networks will again get expanded. Expansion will again take place. So the mobility is not the only thing which will drive 5G uh, you know, growth. It will be the applications which will drive the 5G growth. So you find that new applications coming, the growth cycle will restart in the 5G. It's a temporary decrease, not a, uh, you know, kind of a decrease on a permanent basis. Once the application is coming, it will start increasing again. Okay, sir. So as per our channel checks uh, indicated, like uh, the still the major majority of the inventories are with uh, uh, global telcos uh, and distributor levels. Uh, like uh, are they getting repetitive orders and new orders from the uh, telcos levels? And what's your view on this inventory issue, or, or like uh, when the things are expected expected to shut out? 
I think you are talking about fiber optic cable. That you did not mention, but I understand from your question. You are talking about fiber optic cable. Now, yes, sir. It is true that uh, there has been an inventory built up with the telcos as well as uh, uh, distributors. As a result of which, you would find uh, sale of fiber optic cable has slowed down, which I said in my opening remark also. Not only us, but worldwide. What had happened a year ago in the US market, for example, Delivery of fiber optic cable has become seven to ten months. As a result of which, telcos around the world, you know, and that was the situation in many other places. Telcos around the world had bought lot of cable, anticipating that demand would be so high that cable availability would be low. So they amassed lot of stock. So was the situation with distributors. But as it happened, Chinese demand was less than what was expected. And as a result of which, there was an inventory built up in China, which was going into the market worldwide. So that, including then inventory accumulated with the operators, led to a lull in the temporary lull in this demand. So we expect, you know, in U.S. market, it started looking up again. European market, we believe, would start looking up again in next one or two quarters. U.S. market, particularly with the government funding which is being done to access the inaccessible areas of fiber, uh, is going to pick up very uh, significantly in the next couple of quarters. So you are right, there is inventory buildup, there is a lull in demand and that you will find in our result also that uh, fiber optic cable sales has gone down drastically in the current quarter and in the last quarter also. But this is all expected to, again, uh, come back to the normal levels in next couple of quarters. Got it, sir. Sir, uh, right now we are in the progress of uh, new products on 5G. Like uh, right now, the you mentioned about uh, new applications are coming up. Like uh, when the benefits are expected to realize uh, uh, on this new product side? Look, you know, we have already started realizing those benefits. As I said again in my opening remarks that uh, an order of 623 crores has been received for uh, you know, 5G networking product by HFCL. Now, let me tell you, <clears throat> which I said in my opening remark also, that we are the first Indian company to receive such a large order for 5G equipment for indigenously designed product. First Indian company to receive such a large order for indigenously designed 5G product. Nobody else has done so. So this speaks itself of our, you know, initiative which we took uh, to design equipment in India, <coughs> keeping in view of our making India initiative of government. And today we are able to receive 5G orders for large quantity. And not only this, we will be exporting this, these products to different countries also as we are doing in fiber optic cable. So, we have done 5G fixed wireless access equipment, other networking equipment, routers, for example, which are used in 4G and 5G both. But specifically, these routers which we have designed are going to be used in large quantity in Bharatnet, which government has already announced and uh, a draft RFP has been floated for industry consultation and we expect the final tender would come out in next two to three weeks' time and which would also see a large demand of fiber optic cables as well as um, routers. There is going to be a demand of about 6 lakhs kilometers of cable, fiber optic cable, equivalent to about 20 million fiber kilometer equivalent cable, and about uh, 160,000 or so routers, you know. All these are very large opportunities for HFCL because these are indigenously designed products, indigenous products, and we will be more cost competitive. So not only in India, but we are going to export these products also in the coming financial year. So benefit of these products which are designed have started accruing, and uh, number of large orders are further expected for these indigenously designed products. And uh, I'm sure uh, that uh, export also would be a, a good market opportunity for HFCL. Got it. Sir, my last question regarding on the telecom product side. So last two quarters we have reported single digit margins. I just want to understand the like uh, the lower uh, performance because of uh, volume volume driven or uh, price relation driven. 
and i just want to understand about of and ofc side realization in this quarter you know basically a decrease in margin has been the lower sales of optical fiber cable to the lower sale of optical fiber cable has resulted in higher cost because the fixed costs are still remaining same so it has been driven down by the lower uh, sale of optical fiber cable as the sales pick up you know the margin will pick up once again and moreover you know for the new products which you build in five, you know 5g products and all that their margin is reasonably good and it is expected to remain reasonably good okay sir so on the realization side sir of and ofc side like what are the current realization in q3 how much it changed compared to last quarter uh you know realization in fiber optic cable if you look at the fiber you know the realization uh, roughly you know i would say has come down by some percentages it has come down uh, practically if you see uh, the per fiber kilometer realization has come down roughly almost about 20% what used to be in q2 about 1200 rupees per fiber kilometer has come down to about 1000 some rupees per kilometer so about 15 to 20 percent decrease in the realization per kilometer is there but that kind of some decline is there in the raw material cost also particularly in case of fiber got it sir and on that oif side sir optical fiber side optical fiber again as i said you know the prices have come down uh what used to be the prices of something like 350 to 380 rupees per kilometer has come down to something like 250 to 260 rupees per kilometer got it sir uh should i ask one more question sir or should i come i think you should give chance to others yeah fine sir yeah thank you thank you the next question is from the line of santosh sinha from mk global please go ahead uh thanks for taking my question uh my question is regarding the bharat uh the uh, now government has uh actually the cabinet has approved uh, around rupees 1.3 1.5 trillion uh, for bharat net three project so are there opportunities uh, for uh hfcl in areas other than optical fiber and optical fiber cable um is uh, are there other products that hfcl can supply and what can be the overall opportunity size for this and what are the margins that we can expect from uh, uh, bharat net three projects and uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, i will ask you later the other question yeah, mr sena thanks a lot for your good question you know bharat net is a large opportunity for everybody all, all telecom players involved it's about 1.4 lakh crores out of which uh, but let me be clear out of which roughly about Somewhere 40,000 to 50,000 crore would be capex. Rest would be opex, you know, which would be incurred over 10 years. So it is going to be a turnkey contract. Whoever wins, there are 16 different tenders uh, they have uh, carved out, and it will be 16 different tenders. And uh, you know, maximum four would be given to one one company, not more than that. And uh, it is divided in capex as well as opex, as I have just mentioned. Now, a company like HFCL, where are the opportunities? One, I first let me limit ourselves to capex. One, you know, if we do EPC projects as we have been doing, uh, till now the payment conditions are not hundred percent clear because the current payment conditions are a little bit onerous on the vendors in a sense that you know part of the payment would be received much later with the overall project execution. so all the vendors have represented that the payment condition need to be proved so whatever draft tender has come that is undergoing some changes and we would see the final tender coming up in next 2 to 3 weeks time so we'll know the payment situation then so imagining that payment situation will improve which i am pretty confident of then is the opportunity maybe we don't want to go for a very large scale opportunity for epc projects but yes there are epc opportunities because we are trying to transform our company into product company from an epc company you know from an epc more of a epc driven projects uh, we are making our company not only trying we have successfully done so to a product led company so one opportunity is there in the epc business second opportunity is there if you win epc business then there is a continuous revenue on every year basis 
for O&M, operation and maintenance, there will be annuity revenue coming up for 10 years. Now, but the good opportunity is in the equipment side also and the fiber optic cable side also. As I said, there is a demand of 6 lakh kilometer of fiber optic cable in this tender for 3 years. This implementation period is 3 years. So every year there is a requirement of about 2 lakh kilometer of fiber optic cable. So that's a good opportunity for us. Number 2, then there is opportunity for selling fiber also. Because uh, let us say somebody else wins the fiber optic cable from some, of, uh, some other EPC player. If he needs fiber, because there are not many people who manufacture fiber in India, will be able to supply the fiber. Then routers. Routers is a significant part of the equipment. Significant part of the equipment. Rather, the, I think, most significant part of the equipment required. And routers are required about 160,000 plus in the quantity. Uh, let me tell you, we have designed our own routers. We are now one of the two companies who have got indigenously designed routers required by Bharatnagar. Indigenously designed routers. Only one of the two companies, we and Tejas, which is Tata and company, they have routers and we have routers. So I think we enjoy a significant uh, cost advantage over our uh, multinational friends on account of our local production. And as a result of which, we should be able to have a good opportunity for selling routers also. So fiber, fiber optic cable, routers, some of the other optical equipment, we have a good opportunity coming up in front of us. And I think uh, Bharatnet should be a very uh, uh, significant opportunity, not only for HFCL, but all indigenous vendors who, sub who manufacture in India, uh, where HFCL has got a significant program, which is fiber, fiber optic cable, routers, other optical equipment. And then if you go to the next phase of Bharatnet, which is going to be implemented not by government, but which is going to be implemented by private enterprises for giving connectivity to the houses. The government is taking the uh, network to the panchayat, panchayat building or whatever. From there on, it would be the private enterprises which should be giving connectivity. They may be using Wi-Fi, they may be using uh, optical ONTs. Again, those are the areas where HFCL is present. And those will also present significant market opportunity to HFCL. Uh, thank you, sir, for the detailed answer. Uh, my last question is regarding uh, the PLI benefit. So how much of the product of HFCL is actually eligible for PLI benefit? Uh, is it only the optical fiber and cable or uh, the other products also? And uh, when is the first year from which uh, this actually uh, PLI benefit will start coming from? PLI benefit is not available on fiber optic cable. It is available on telecom equipment. And we will start receiving this one 20, this coming of financial year 24. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Pranay Gandhi from Green Portfolio. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, so firstly, I would like to express my gratitude to the management, including you, Mr. Jain and Mr. Agawal, for accommodating our request to connect with the management on a one one-on-one basis in the last con call. The proactive outreach from Mr. Amit after the uh, last conference call reflects positively on the management, and it has really helped us understand the company prospects in a better way. So thank you so much. Now, uh, turning to my questions, I would appreciate if we could uh, provide more details on the recent order from 5G telecom equipment secured from a domestic telecom operator. Could you elaborate on the nature of the products that the company will be supplying? And considering the fact that the 600 crore order is already on hand, are there any upward revision to the projected revenue of 1,000 crores from the segment in FY25? Look, you know, uh, equipment is 5G networking equipment for subscriber access. So wireless equipment for subscriber access. So that's the equipment, uh, you know, because there are certain non-disclosure agreements, so I cannot go in more detail, but it is a uh, subscriber access equipment on wireless for broadband on 5G. Uh, and this is 623 crore order, which has to be supplied within the next uh, financial year or as soon as possible if we can do it early. If we do it early, we can certainly expect more orders from our customers. 
uh, and and then this is the demand from one customer but uh, we would be going ahead to sell this to other customers also in india and abroad both uh, because this equipment has very significant demand opportunities worldwide because fixed wireless access as a broadband access has come up as a significant use case for 5g networks so we can definitely look forward for more revenue from this equipment in the next financial year now coming to 1000 crores or so whatever numbers are using uh, i i think indigenously developed equipment we should be able to do quite more than 1000 crores which we might have projected earlier but it should be quite more than that because we are expecting more large, more orders of reasonable size in coming uh, coming weeks uh, we are expecting more orders including from bsnl including from private operators so uh, i i expected you know i have no doubt that it would be significantly more than 1000 crores okay and so these orders would be for telecom equipment itself and not uh, for the projects right no this will be telecom equipment itself i'm not talking about projects project is different this is telecom yes. equipment itself you know because why i'm saying so you know one this 623 crores is already there some large orders are in pipeline which i should be able to receive very very soon very very soon uh, then as i said little while ago bharat net is coming up you know bharat net has got a huge demand opportunity for routers which are again we have and we have indigenously designed them which is a very major thing you know, we are only one of the two companies who have designed routers in india we and the other is the tata tcs company tejas they nobody else all others are uh, you know uh, international uh, multinational companies so there is significant demand opportunity there then you know we have a significant demand opportunity for unlicensed band radios which are being used for enterprise connectivity but or not only that for backhaul of the uh, uh, backhaul of the traffic of the 4g networks so that is also a good demand opportunity Uh, in fact bsnl came out with a large tender for that about rupees 200 crores uh, for the uh, uh, 5g uh, this backhaul for the unlicensed band radio and we have been uh, l1 in that so we expect that we should receive order for that also so uh, you know these are all equipment orders which i am talking about and which i am saying that we should definitely cross 1000 crores without without i would have doubt perfect sir so just uh, an add on to this i re- i believe previously you had mentioned that regarding the ubr equipment um, you had received a very strong feedback from one of the international uh, companies so is is there any progress i mean in terms of uh, it getting converted to orders we we are talking to quite a few companies uh, quite a few companies i would not name them but we are talking to quite a few companies internationally and locally also <laughs> locally we have deployed a huge quantity of uh, uh, this uh, uvrs uh, we have been lowest in a large tender of bsnl also and likewise we are talking to a number of international companies also where i i, I believe we will be receiving reasonably sized orders sometime in near future okay perfect sir so my second question pertains to the defense side of the business previously you had mentioned electro optics uh, that we had participated in one tender and there was an upcoming tender so if you could give a brief on that and same goes for uh, emination fuses uh, i believe the company had approached indian army for trials any update on that and lastly the sdr which was still under development and was scheduled to be completed by mid of this year so if you could just uh, shed some light on all these three aspects i i will, I will go through all the defense products which we are doing some are uh, under development some are uh, being tried in army uh, coming to one of the projects which is uh, recently we have participated is upgradation of dmp2 uh, armor fighting vehicle where uh, fire control system and uh, optical sights are to be upgraded we have successfully gone through utr which is user trial uh, readiness uh, something like that they call it and now we wait for the rsp to come where we will be participating on uh, uh, sdr which is already under development as i told you uh, on the other hand the radars 
which is a recent development, you know, where we have already gone through development cycle of some of the radars and others are under development. So we expect uh, this year to receive reasonably reasonably good quantum of orders for the radars also. On the few side, we have not been lucky so far. Uh, we have asked for a retrial by Indian Army, which I think expected to happen in the next two to three months time. After we go through those trials, uh, then would be the question of orders will come. Till now, we have no orders for serious, but yes, this is a consumable item. This is a consumable item, and this is a continuous demand for serious. So I am sure that once we pass through these trials uh, in next few months' time, there should be demand coming up for uh, serious also. So again, since uh, all the defense orders take a lot of time, we have not included in our projections even for 24, 25 any order from the defense, you know, when we do AOP, we have not included anything, but we expect, still we expect uh, products like radars, products like electro-optic sites should give us some revenue, should, should give us some revenue. On optical side side, yes, we have uh, uh, some products under development. Uh, one of the tenders we participated, there has been, uh, we have been a bit unlucky, unreasonably unlucky. We could not get that order. But yes, uh, nevertheless, our site has proven very successful. So we should be uh, able to get more orders in future. So as I said, this year we have not included in our projection any order for defense, but we are very bullish about it, particularly this BMP2 upgradation, uh, then uh, for this electro-optics products, then radars, we are quite bullish about that, that they should fetch us uh, good results. Uh, uh, in, in the next financial year, but yes, results will start coming in 24, 25 also. Okay, perfect. So, thank you so much for the opportunity and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parth Mehta from M Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my first question was uh, whatever new products on the 5G front that we are developing at Redef. Uh, the R and D uh, expenses are they deducted on the PNL or uh, how do we uh, capitalize them? No, Red is we are not doing any 5G product. Red is we are developing uh, radars. There is no 5G product in Red is. So nothing is being developed as a uh, uh, nothing is being developed as a 5G product in Red is. Okay, so whatever R&D expenditure we uh, incur at Redex for the radar. Uh, please, please repeat it. I could not follow you. Any any of the 5G uh, R&D that we do and indigenous uh, products that we develop, uh, is that being capitalized on the PNL? Yes, yes, it is being capitalized and they are being amortized over a period of time. Okay, so uh, sir, my second question is uh, uh, whatever uh, products that we have developed, we will need approvals uh, for those 5G products, uh, even if we are exporting globally, will we need a blanket approval or we will need an approval from each country uh, for for uh, uh, making it to the PNL? No, look, you know, any, any operator which buys any telecom product goes through its own approval cycle. There are some countries where there are you know, agencies which approve the products omnibus basis for all the operators. But most of the places operators have their own testing facilities and they go through their own approval cycle, that whether the product suits to their requirement or not. So there is no such global approval that if you get it approved from one source, then it is approved for everybody. It doesn't happen that way. <laughs> it is more of a... Uh, uh, you know, individual operators approval, like India, for example. BSNL has got its own approval, TEC. Geo has got its own approval. You know, their own lab is there where they approve the product. So is Airtel, so is Voda Idea. So every operator goes through its approval cycle where it includes lab testing as well as field trials, which is very normal. Okay. So do we think that will happen in uh, this financial year and uh, we'll see some contribution from those 5G products in the financial year, 24-25? Oh yes, this 622 crores order has been received after approval only. Yeah, so, yeah. More, more on that uh, we are looking to receive in the next. Uh, we are looking for more such orders. There are 
I think two, three, three places uh, trials are already going on. So they are domestic or they are export orders? Both. Uh, no, this 623 crore is the domestic. domestic yes. Others I am talking about are domestic as well as international. Okay. So my last question is on the uh, uh, on the front of contribution from uh, projects and contribution from products. Uh, as uh, uh, the line has been, we have been going more on the product. 70-30 uh, was the contribution that we were looking at. But if you look at contribution for this quarter, it has been tweaked on the other way. So more from the project side and less from the product side. Apart from the fall in prices of OSP, what has gone wrong for the product side? No, there's nothing gone wrong. It is because of the lower sales of OFC. As I said, optical fiber cable sale has gone down significantly. It has gone down significantly in the uh, uh, last quarter and the current quarter. As a result of which product-led uh, revenue has gone down. If you look at the same quarter last year, yeah. it was 693 crores. Yes. In the current quarter, it is 364 crores. Yes. So, so you know, okay. with this kind of numbers, uh, you know, what is, uh, I just, just let me correct these numbers. So, a little, little wrong. Just hold on a second. Let's see what total production. Yeah, this is more or less the same person. There would be some small difference would be there. But more or less, you know, uh, OFC sale, yes, uh, these are the right numbers. Last quarter it was six. Last quarter, December quarter of the last financial year, it was 625 crores. Yes. This year it has been 295 crores. It is less than half. So this is what is getting reflected in this ratio which has changed. And as I said, the ratio will further improve again once the demand of optical fiber cable improves. And also, with this large orders we have received for products this current quarter, you know, which is about 2,000 crores, which is about 1,800 crores. This will also improve the ratio of products into the overall revenue because 1,800 crores orders for products is a very significant number. And also the fiber optic cable demand is expected to improve. So our overall strategy for becoming a product-led company is very, very successful, very, very successful. There is a, you know, we can't compare it, uh, take it on a quarter to quarter basis, because quarter to quarter ups and downs may happen. But the overall basis, we are going very smoothly on that strategy. If you just exclude the optical fiber cable for uh, temporary lull in the demand, you see that this quarter we have received uh, orders for 1800 crores for the products alone, 1800 crores for the products, which is a very, very significant thing, which includes uh, 623 crores and little bit more rather for other products you receive orders in their quarter. Uh, for indigenously designed products. So our strategy is very successful and I am pretty sure that uh, with this strategy, company return ratios will improve significantly in coming future. Okay. Sir, uh, the, uh, are we doing any capex for these products, uh, uh, new products to be developed? Uh, or uh, Last time I think uh, we had said that we are doing uh, little south of 100 crores we are doing uh, uh, capex for developing these products yes you know there are two kind of capex one is r d one is the setting up of the facility for manufacture of products so we are doing both r d is happening which would be a continuous process in the company and also there would be expense of about 80 to 100 crores on setting up the facility for manufacturing of the products so as to we can take uh, start taking benefit of uh, uh, PLI from the next financial year. And this will be for all the products put together, right? and we don't need to go for, for 100 yes, yes, yes. Yes. Right. Okay, so it is across products. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, sir. And I expect the OFC cycle to improve a couple of quarters from now. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor & Co. Please go ahead. Sir and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so you can hear me? Uh, Kapoor, I was doing this. Thank you, sir. 
सर इफ आउट ऑफ दिस ऑर्डर बुक ऑफ सेवन सिक्स सेवन एट फॉर दी फॉर क्यू थ्री एंडिंग एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर टू जीरो फाइव वन इज टूवर्ड्स दी ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस सो वेन दिस ये दो हजार इक्यावन करोड़ कब एग्जीक्यू मैंने सिस्टम में आएगा एंड आउट ऑफ दिस बैलेंस अमाउंट हाउ मच इज टूवर्ड्स दी ओ एफ सी स्पेशली अबाउट आर वी एक्सपोर्टिंग ऑप्टिक फाइबर केबल्स ऑल्सो सर इफ यू गिव दैट नंबर yeah you know this uh, uh, order of uh, uh, what you mentioned about uh, this onm this is for next 7 years next 7 years optical fiber cable we are exporting no doubt last year we had a good year of export you know about 800 crores this year worldwide demand has slowed down the export would also go down but yes we keep on receiving continuous order for exports these are not major orders at one point of time orders keep on coming and we keep on supplying We had expected to cost thousand crores in this current financial year, but with this downturn in demand all over the world, of course we are going to be falling short of our estimations by a large number. But uh, as I said, from next year onwards, <coughs> it is expected to become better in next two quarters, and we will further improve. So, as you just explained in the earlier reply, that both OF and the OFC prices have corrected by twenty percent. Correct me there. and then also the demand is down so uh, where have the things gone wrong one is it uh, i think so one of the one of the key players did mentioned about the demand uh, for, uh, fall from the us in the us market fall in the us market has resulted in this uh, per, uh, percolating to the domestic indian market so uh, do you think only at uh, when the demand from the uh, from us and europe uh, improve then only our domestic uh, of Uh, and the OFC market will improve, or the when the Bharat Net comes into fore, that is the time when things will start. Mane looking uh, uh, up, sir. If if we took look at the uh, if we look at our operational numbers, sir. If we barring this other income component, we have done. Uh, uh, so the numbers are not uh, up to the mark. Mm-hmm. If we exclude the other other income part. Sir, Kapoor, let me explain you. Demand of fiber optic cable for Indian companies. Uh, when i say improvement will come from two three different areas if you look at domestic <coughs> bharat net is going to play a major role because that's a 6 lakh kilometer of fiber optic cable which is a large quantum and uh, now we should be translate it into more than uh, 20 million kilometers of fiber so which is a large quantum that is one second US demand is going to go up significantly in the next financial year i tell you why the US government has announced a you know large subsidy for serving unserved or lesser low served areas by fiber optic cable to ensure people are able to have a seamless broadband connectivity from their homes and offices total subsidy for the last mile only for the last mile announces about 61 billion dollars 61 billion dollars and state wise division has also been announced disbursement of that subsidy is expected to start from middle of this financial year uh, sorry this uh, coming uh, this uh, this uh, current calendar year so once that subsidy disbursement picks up the demand of fiber optic cable would increase significantly because uh this this is for giving broadband connectivity over fiber so us demand will start happening in next couple of quarters itself with this bead and baba and all those names are there broadband subsidy us government has announced similarly when as i said little while ago the stocks with the distributors and operators go down as uh, was there in a case in the beginning of the year demand for europe will also pick up demand will pick up not only because of bharat net it is demand from us demand for europe all this demand all these places either they will pick up from the next another couple of quarters or maybe quarter more depending upon country to country place to place but demand is certainly going to pick up in fiber optic cable in the next financial year itself right sir so just just to just to uh, conclude in, on this point sir then it is only the of prices that has corrected led to the uh, lowering of realization means uh, fresh capacity in of has been added or the lower utilization levels for ofc worldwide has led to this decline sir 
So this is both factors. One, the prices have come down. Second, the utilization has also gone down. That is why this uh, uh, revenue reduction of roughly about 50% is there. Some extent, prices have gone down 15% or so. Rest is the less demand at this point of time, which, as I said again, uh, next couple of our quarters, we are pretty sure would start improving. Okay. So one more question I would like to add, uh, ask is okay. about the it's a second sorry, question. Push I'm, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. May I request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions? As there are Jee, several parties. Opportunity, DJ, sir. Ajit. Yes, sir. Hello. The next question, please. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Agarwal from Manyur. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, going forward, uh, what will be our product uh, component, the mix, how, how the percentage mix will change and from when? And second, uh, the margins in telecom products are more than the optic, optic cables and fibers. No, look, market for telecom increment is not only uh, optical fiber cable, but it is uh, for... Uh, uh, is telecom equipment also you know we have large orders for telecom equipment you know and which are indigenously designed telecom equipment also because okay. as i said 1800 crores orders we have already received in the last quarter for equipment you know okay. i would again like to re-emphasize that we are becoming a product-led company okay this quarter was a particular aberration quarter because of a lower demand of fiber optic cable but which is settled okay. very quickly so on the equipment side also, we are doing significant amount of work and I think uh, I can say with a lot of uh, pride that your company has received the largest 5G orders which any Indian company has received till now, 623 crores, nobody else has received till now, which, is, which itself speaks of the kind of development we are doing and I am expecting, uh, I don't know the size of the new orders which will be there, but yes, I am expecting more orders to come for the equipment in near future to HFCL. So, if I, you know, my target is to become at least 70-30, 70% product, 30% EPC, or if possible, even reduce that also, maybe maybe 75-25, something like that. But yes, 70-30, we should definitely be able to reach, uh, at least two thirds, one third, we should be able to reach in the next financial year itself. And when will when will start delivering this order, sir? Uh, we should be this, uh, you know, particular order. I am talking about five G related order. Our okay. target is to start delivering from April, April end. In a year's time. I would try to do it quicker than that. I would try my best to do earlier than that. And what is, what what will the EBITDA margin in that? Well, EBITDA margin, you know. I don't want my customer to know my ability for margin. Okay, okay. Then that would be a problem for me. <laughs> okay. But overall, the company's EBITDA margin will go up from here? EBITDA margin will go up, definitely go up because of, you know, what has pulled down the EBITDA margin is fiber optic cable reduced sales. Okay. Once that increases, EBITDA margin will definitely go up. Okay. And what is your view on the optic fibers from when it will improve, sir? I, you know, price. start improving from the first quarter of the next financial year. But okay. a significant improvement on the second quarter. Second quarter, okay. Th thank you, sir. Th thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Sancheti from Mania Finance. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes, mister. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to know what is the capacity utilization in optical fibers out of the 25 million kilometers? And what gives us the confidence for the capacity expansion which is uh, we are going to do? of 35 kilo million kilometers so it is you know about 50 percent even little less than that uh now the, in this you, quarter yeah this quarter i'm talking about yeah. now uh you know capacity expansion is the right thing to do if you see when we started capacity expansion the you know market was really booming you know we didn't have uh, any uh any free capacity, our factory was working 24 by 7, and, as a, and we were not able to fulfill the demand of customers. So as a result of which we were, we expanded our capacity. But this is a cyclical thing, you know. Every three, four years, for some time, demand goes down and then comes up again. You have to see the overall, you know, overall need of the fiber optic cable 
and then you have to plan capacity not on the basis of one year up or six months down because if you see as the need for broadband goes up as the need for data goes up as the need for you know as the video uh, and kind of application go up today you know netflix and amazon prime all these ott applications you know how fast they have gone up now without fiber optic cable would you have been able to access netflix at your home would you have been able to watch live television at your home you know uh, without having access to fiber optic cable no, no nothing of this would have been possible this is all becoming possible because of fiber optic cable so as these applications grow demand of fiber optic cable is going to keep on growing immensely so this few months downturn because of certain factors does not mean that it is a downturn forever it is only a temporary and which happens every 3 4 years it happens once it has happened now it will come up again so increase in capacity was <clears throat> uh, you know commensurate with this uh, expected demand of increase in the fiber optic cable and you would find the next couple of quarters the demand will go up again and this uh, capacity would deterioration would again reach to the previous levels <clears throat> yes. since you mentioned that it is cyclical uh, generally this downturn remains i mean in your experience that this downturn remains for how many quarters then this is there is no fixed rule for that there is no fixed rule for that you know that it will remain for how many quarters <clears throat> Now this has gone down, but the U.S. demand is going to be there in next couple of quarters. It's going to come up again. Indian demand is going to increase again, maybe next three quarters, about two to three quarters with the Bharat debt happening. So normally two to three quarters is the number I would say the demand slows down and then comes up again. Okay. And what but is the risk? Rule for that. There is no fixed rule for that. Right. So, what is the risk in the U.S. market as well as the Indian market if uh, something like that, what Tesla is developing, a direct satellite uh, internet? What will be the risk to our uh, optical fiber uh, business? Look, satellite is a have we have we assessed that? Yeah, yeah, we have discussed that. We have understood that. You know, satellite is a completely different uh, segment of market. It's a uh, is it can never compete with fiber what bandwidth fiber can provide satellite can never provide at least not in a foreseeable future that satellite would provide that kind of a bandwidth and number 2 handsets are very costly service pricing is costly satellite would be more used for remote areas where you know fiber accessibility is not there broadband accessibility is not there telephone accessibility is not there so those would be the places where satellite would be used for in terms of bandwidth satellite would never be able to compete with the fiber optic cable you know so it's not a competition more of a complementary approach okay and uh, this is the last question that is bharat net uh, will give more opportunities on product based uh, is it a product based opportunity or a project based opportunity it's both it's both it's a mixed opportunity that uh, what ratio there are three things there are three one is product and the project and third is operation and maintenance which is going to be annual revenue for next 10 years there are three opportunities in this and uh, if, when we are bidding for uh, bharat net uh, opportunities uh, we are going to look at more product base or uh, we are going to go explore in all the opportunities so we are currently working on analyzing all the aspects of the tender let the final draft of the tender come out then only we will decide how are we going to do about that because uh, final tender has not come out it is the uh, you know first draft come out for industry consultation many suggestions have been given but uh, uh, once uh, the final number comes out final shape of the tender comes out we will decide at that point of time we are evaluating okay. but yes no doubt it's a good opportunity for us okay and uh, uh, i was just going to the presentation and uh, it shows that domestic railway opportunities uh how uh, how many orders have we received as a uh, kavach and uh, because that has been the buzzword for uh, they are not in kavach that's the kavach part of product we are in telecom systems for uh, uh, railways yeah, so we are working on telecom kavach is a signaling product and so our how much uh, of the orders we received is from the railway sectors railway orders should be around 600 some crores uh, yeah it is about 600 and Uh, 20 crores or something like that. Okay, 
I would really appreciate if you know if we can divide the order book uh, into uh, you know uh, how much is railways, how much is telecom, how much defense in telecom, how much it is uh, for optical fibers, because that will help us to understand you know uh, how uh, we are going to go. I noted uh, your suggestion and we'll publish it in our website definitely. Thank you, thank you so much, sir, and all the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this uh, earning call for third quarter of FY24. Uh, as I have uh, been saying, that we have got uh, three strategies, you know, more number of products, more customers, more geographies. And we are very successful at that. This quarter, though, you see the results are a bit subdued because of fiber optic cable uh, demand going down, and which is a worldwide factor, nothing to us, nothing particular to us. But if you look at the product side of it, we have received orders for 17, 1800 crores just for the products alone. And this effort of making company a product led company. Uh, is is uh, becoming successful and it will remain successful and we will keep on increasing our revenue from products and more so from indigenously designed products, not only for Indian market but from the world market. And that strategy through our R&D is proving to be very successful and I can assure you that this will improve the uh, not only the revenues but the return ratios of the company also. And with the demand becoming better for fiber optic cable in near future. I expect this uh, ratio of product to the total revenue will definitely go up, return ratios will improve. So uh, we all, you know, with the growth of Indian music economy, which is uh, really growing at a faster pace than uh, even the world market had estimated and we are growing despite of the world economy going down thanks to the leadership of and the policies of our Honorable Prime Minister in Narendra Modi's government, I am sure that uh, telecom sector, which is already doing well, will further do better. And uh, companies which are more focused on indigenous development and indigenous manufacturing, like your company, HFCL, will do even better in future. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks a lot. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.